Hey everybody, welcome to Capstone. We are slowly making progress as always. This week, no pressure for the weekly activity online. I simply want a title. And it doesn't even have to be your final title, just a working title. So let's get to it. So there are a lot of ways that you can write titles, but the reason I want to do this is it will help you think about what is the central focus of your work and where are you going with it and what do you hope other people can get from it. And having a title helps a lot, I find. In my own work, what I generally do is I have a quick working title, like you know, if I'm writing about Batman, it'll just be Batman. But eventually, I try to make it, in the, I would say in the first 25%, time period. So if you think about from beginning to end of your study, in the first 25% of that time period, I try to have a, a good title that hopefully will stick. I might change it later, but without that title, I feel like I'm still not exactly sure. So it's a similar thing to the um, thesis statement. So a thesis statement, if you don't have that for an essay, you don't have an essay. Obviously, if you are presenting something, you want some kind of title, and there are some factors to think about, and that's what I want to talk about today. So I just want you to find some cool titles. And by cool, I want you to define that word or, or think about how that might apply. So you might think it's cool to make a, um, a sort of parody on a different title that already exists. I, I've done all of these things, by the way, and some are good and some are bad, and it probably varies depending on who you ask. But yeah, so you might want to do something that takes a well-known phrase or title and changes it a little bit into something relevant to your work. You might want to take something more seriously, so you say, you know, um, an in-depth analysis of the cultural and relativistic factors, whatever, blah, 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 right? I'm just making up words. I'm trying to throw out big words, but that's not the way I would recommend writing a title. You obviously want to think about what the main things are. So if you are talking about Spotify, is it Spotify that's important? And maybe it is. Or is it listening to music that's important? And then maybe you want to go a little broader, even though you focused for your method on Spotify, you actually are concerned with music. And so maybe you should have music in your title and not Spotify, or maybe vice versa. So there's often a colon, right? Those two dots, and you may or may not want to do this. So I'm totally open to different things, and I know that my way of writing titles are different than others, but um, most academic titles for you know books or articles or anything like that have something a colon and then something else and that's something else that secondary part of the title is often a, a more specific explanation of what's going on right so you could be like you know television commercials 1980 to 1999 or something right you'd even probably want to get more specific than that so you know alcoholic beverage television commercials in mainstream media from 1980 to 1999 something like that so that tells people what they're in for. That I want you to do no matter what. I want you to think about how your title will set the expectations for anyone who simply sees the title and says to themselves, I, I want to listen to that talk or I want to read that article or no, that's not for me. And you know, you've done this yourself. You've looked at a bunch of articles. Some of them you read the title and thought, no, that's not for me. Others you took. And sometimes maybe it didn't fit your expectations and you were kind of pissed off at that. Sometimes it met perfectly your expectations, and that's great when that happens, right? So you want to hopefully make the expectations high enough, like you're going to learn some cool stuff about XYZ, but not so crazy high like, hey, like clickbait, right? Hey, I have the answer to why we exist or, you know, the five best ways to, to meet your mate or anything like that, right? I promise true love. These things are not very good claims you should be making, but maybe you have a good claim that you can better understand or you can help others better understand why we fall for this technique, right? Or why we uh, flock to this idea over another one. Maybe that's something that you do provide. So you do clarify that. In which case you could say something like why people do this thing or how people do this thing. So that might be something you want to put too. You can do questions, although I'm not a big fan of questions, especially if they're not answered quickly. So you might say something like, why do we speak, question mark? And then you can say an analysis of people's conversations from XYZ. 
So you could do that because that answers it right away. Although I would say, why are you asking the question if you're just going to answer it anyway? But you do pique people's interest, perhaps. So I want you to think about what is the opening of your title that hopefully attracts all the right people, but also kind of says to anyone else, no, no, that's not what this is about, right? You don't want to set up false expectations. So um, I'm going to find some titles that I like and put them up here. I'm also going to suggest that you do the same. I'm actually going to demand that you do the same, and that's your activity for the week. So not only do I want you to find some good stuff, but I also want you to put it together in a way that works for you. So maybe you are a humorous person. You want to put a sort of joke in there. And there's some funny things that I've seen. There's actually a, an article that I'll post, hopefully if I can find it, about this, these two, if I remember correctly, these two scholars who had this sort of contest of how many Bruce Springsteen lyrics they could put in their titles, which had nothing to do with Bruce Springsteen. But so they, they had fun with it, right? But it also made some kind of sense to what they were studying. So maybe you want to put a joke in there. Great. Maybe you don't want to put a joke in there and you want it to be quite serious, right? And there's obviously material that you do want to maybe have fun with, and there's other material that's probably pretty serious and you don't want to be joking about it. You want to think about that because it sets the tone for your whole study or at least the expectations for your study. So if you're making a joke, I hope you make some jokes in your presentation and in your essay. And if you don't want to make any jokes and you want it to be very serious, or maybe you want it to be really um, elegant, and so you're going for elegance here and you want an elegant title and you're, you, that sets expectations that your essay will be elegant. And so that's what I want you thinking about. What do you want people to see? Let's imagine that this is a book and that this is the cover, but it's only a word cover, right? There's no pictures. We'll talk about actually presentations and pictures later. But I want you to send me your title and I want you to think about how it will literally look, right? What will it look like on a slide? What will it look like on a page? If it were a book, what would it look like if it were just a textual cover of a book? And a few little basic things, right? This is Serif. I'm going to put it there. I'm doing this with nothing now, but hopefully it appears nicely when I do this. This is sans serif, which means without serif. So you see these line things disappear when you go sans serif. That is what I want to see for your title slide. We're going to talk about how to present or some techniques for presentations later, but I just want you to think a little bit about it now. You've probably, I know you've seen me present things, and it's always basically black and white for a title at least, and there are reasons for that. I won't get into all the details, but just think about this, right? Assuming you're presenting behind you like in a, with a projector, and that might not be the case this year, but in general, people usually present their findings at a conference or something where they do use a projector. At this point, I just insist, my students at least, you need a black background. And the reason I say that, among other things, is that say this bookshelf was what it was being pasted onto, right, or projected onto. It might not, the projector's light might not meet exactly the dimensions of uh, the background. And if it doesn't, it looks really weird to have a square, but you actually have a widescreen background, right? Or vice versa, you have a widescreen screen but it actually gets put onto a square and it looks horrible in this weird way and stuff. A black one, you don't see the lines, you don't see the cutoff points, it just blends in. So that's nice. It also provides the highest contrast. There are people who are colorblind that might be watching your presentation or have other visual impairments that you want to make it a high contrast situation. And yes, you could do something with like a yellow and red and light yellow bright red or something like that, but then it looks more like a like puke or something than an actual serious, somewhat academic presentation. So anyway, also, the more you mess with colors, at least in this case, the more likely that the projector or the monitor that somebody else is using is different. So what you think is like a, a cool looking color actually looks like a horrible color on their screen or what have you. And so you don't, you don't want that. Also, some people's monitors are bigger, better, and so they make it look smaller, they change the dimensions on you and you can't really control that. If you have just a nice black background, it blends into everything, it also allows you to put a white text and that white text stands out and it's also the light that's projected is the actual text. So when you think about it, right, light gets projected like a light bulb really, right? The light bulb goes onto the screen and it gets back bouncing onto your eyes, into your eyes, and then it bounces around in your in your, um, in your brain, basically, it's uh, I read recently that the most, the biggest part of your brain is dedicated to visual processing, kind of like with computers as well. And so 
Do you want that visual processing that's going on in people's heads and computers to be focused on the white background or this colorful background that you've decided? Or do you want it to be on the text? I would say you should have the emphasis on your text. So if you wanted to shine a light at people and say, hey, pay attention, I wouldn't shine the background of whatever I want people to pay attention to. I would shine the text itself. So anyway, I want you to just design so you have it, your first slide of your presentation. I don't want you worrying too much about your presentations, but that's what I want. I want to, if you don't like the title in a month from now, that's fine. But for now, I want a title. I also suggest you put your name, however you like it, and you can put stuff like Young Harris College or you know Communication Studies Department. That's cool, but that's I leave up to you. Um, I'll give you some examples of my work, of course. We can talk about maybe putting images later, but for now, I just want it textual. So you get to choose. I have certain favorites. Uh, this is Montserrat, and that's what I use on my website now, and that's what I've come to like. There's also other ones. Helvetica is obviously very popular. You could use Times New Roman when you're writing, and I encourage you to do that, but you see the difference between the title and the writing? The writing allows people, if you're reading the, the actual paper, to go line by line. That's why we have serifs, right? It helps you do this. But you'll notice any good advertisement on a billboard usually doesn't have serif, and that's because you're not reading it in the same way. You want it to jump out at you and be clear and crisp, but you don't want it so that people can read line by line by line by line by line, and that's why people use serif. And so there's a little bit of font history or font ideas for you. But uh, yeah, feel free to choose the font that you like. As I said, if you want to make, make sure it's readable, of course, but if you want it to be more humorous, you can go for like a big and bold maybe. If you want it to be more elegant, you can do a more sort of gothic style. That's totally up to you. But I want you thinking about this stuff because it'll help you prepare. Like, I want people to, to feel comfortable and to laugh with me, not at you, but with you when you present because it's a somewhat humorous topic, even though you're, t you're doing a serious study. Or again, you want it to be elegant. You want to have sort of an embodiment of like a regal persona where you can show your knowledge and that's the kind of font and title you want to pick. And that, again, sets expectations for everything else. Uh, there's probably other things that I haven't thought of that maybe you want to go for in terms of your personality. Uh, I don't want to get all into how this font will be your personality, but it does reveal certain things, right? It makes people think that this is a really serious thing or it's not, that somebody has thought about it or they haven't. That's why when I see like, and I did this, by the way, when I was a graduate, even when I was a graduate. So when I was in my master's, I remember I had a puke green background because for some reason I thought it was fine. And even when they projected it on, I, I realized kind of unconsciously, I didn't have the words or, or the background, but I, I remember, especially now thinking, oh, fuck, that's horrible. But I'm saving you from that by making sure that you are actually thinking about some questions, right? You're not just choosing a random font, a random a background color or a background image or a random phrase that says, you know, I don't know, whatever garbage title that we might have in our heads. It's the first time if somebody says, hey, what, what are you writing about? And you say this, that's fine. But you want to you wanna be happy. You want people repeating your title, hopefully, because it's memorable and it stands out and it makes them think about and it helps perfectly summarize what it is that you're discussing. So I've taken up too much time. I apologize for that think of, play with, maybe have a few options for your titles and your title slide, but you'll feel, I hope, like once you have that title slide, which you can also use for your last slide, and that's what I always do to kind of bookend things, that's a piece of your presentation done, and you just have to write a few more things, like your lit review summary and your methods and whatever findings you have, and uh, anyway, don't stress, I told you, this is an exciting opportunity to share your knowledge with the world, it starts with your title slide, and that's all I want you to do today. And this week is to think about some titles and create a title slide for yourself. Good luck.